Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So as you can tell from the title, today we're gonna to be doing 2018 beauty favorites. I am very excited. It was really, really hard looking back at all the products that I found this year and trying to pick my ultimate favorites. I was trying to keep this as short as possible and trying to keep this to like as few items in each category as possible so that this video isn't three hours long as I know they can be. And I think I've done a pretty good job. There are a couple of categories like lips and cheeks that you might expect have more than one product, but I've tried to keep it as few ultimate faves as possible. Not all of these are absolutely new out this year but they were new to me this year and I also just want to let you know that I am going to be doing my drugstore slash affordable favorites in my next video so keep an eye out for that one if you're looking for the affordable drugstore faves from the year. I decided to split them up because generally I prefer high-end stuff, high-end products, high-end brands because I am just snobby that way but I know that lots of you aren't and so I wanted to include as many affordable products as possible but again without the video being three hours long so I've split them up I've separated them oh and one last thing I just want to state before we get started not one thing in this video is sponsored this is all just solely my own thoughts and feelings on the products I've tried this year and I won't be including any limited and I won't be including anything that is limited edition because I feel like what's the point in me telling you about something that's so amazing and you can't get it? Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. So I've decided just to leave out anything limited edition. So if you're wondering why I haven't mentioned something that was limited edition that you know I've loved this year, that's why. I just don't think it's, I don't think it's very fair. I think it's mean. I think it's me. So the first thing I'm going to start on the eyes and this is a paint pot from MAC and this is the shade Groundwork. Obviously not new this year but new to me this year. This is become one of my staples in my everyday makeup bag. Like if I'm in a rush, if I'm on the school run, if I'm going to work, I can just literally buff this on my lid and maybe blend a little bit of soft brown or something in the crease and I'm good to go. But this just on its own buffed all on the lid and in the crease and blended out is just perfect for me for every day. The quickest, easiest, nicest eyeshadow that you could do in 10 seconds. It's literally so perfect for that purpose. Now I discovered a new eye primer this year and this is the NARS Tinted Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base and I have the shade Light. I found this when I was looking for a primer to use in my 10 Looks 1 palette video because using my soft ochre paint pot was making my eyes sore to sort of wipe it off. 10 times and, and reapply and then you know if you use a traditional sort of clear primer it doesn't cover up you know if any redness or discoloration on the eyes so I gave this one a try because it does have some coverage you can just see it there but it doesn't have like as much as the soft ochre it's not nowhere near as thick it's much more flattering if you have more mature skin and you don't get along with the paint balls because they're that thicker consistency give this a try because it's got enough coverage to cover redness and veins and discoloration but it's really a smooth very thin um consistency it doesn't crease you don't have to set it it sets itself and it's a much better choice if you're trying to you know absolutely maximize pigment so i feel like 2018 was the year of the eyeshadow palettes there were hundreds of new eyeshadow palettes eyeshadow palettes coming out my ears but looking at my collection this year there were two that i just couldn't choose between and that stood out for me for different reasons the first is the dior um, backstage collection palette and this is the cool neutrals palette although this is a smallish palette smaller palette than a lot of the others that i have it's got lots of options i love the formula of the mattes the shimmers can be you know used as a really subtle soft wash or used wet can be metallic and blinding i feel like you can use this in lots of different ways every day it looks easily with just some of the mattes you know single shadow looks buffed in the crease but you can also do full-on all-out glam looks and because of this size and how small and light it is it's perfect for travel as well and it also has a primer in here which is actually a really good eyeshadow primer so all in all i've really loved using this on a day-to-day -day basis 
The other palette I've been obsessed with this year, and that is the Norvina palette, the sort of mauve purpley. Was I think it was supposed to be like a cool toned palette, but I think the jewelry is a bit out on that one. Again, these are just all of the shades that I love: pinks, purples, you know, rose golds. I am obsessed with all of these shimmers. There isn't really a shade in here. Well, I. I don't really reach for soul very often, but one shadow out of a palette of 14 shades doesn't bother me that I'm not really gonna use that very often. The rest of them I can wear every single day of the week. It's very versatile, very usable. It's got the perfect number of mattes to shimmers. So it has equal like mattes to shimmers, which is like my perfect mix. I find if I don't have enough mattes, I can't really make that many cohesive looks from a palette, um, but it's also got enough variation in the lid shades as well, which some palettes, the balance is a little bit off. This one for me is absolutely perfect. And you know I love ABH formula, and this for me was a classic back to the modern renaissance formula that I love and I have not stopped using this palette since I got it it's just so beautiful much like the Dior palette um you know you can easily use this every single day or you can go absolutely bonkers glam with it as well so it is really versatile really not worth particularly discussing this one because everybody knows how obsessed I am with Monsieur Big. It's really the only mascara I use. I've tried every mascara under the sun this year. I've tested a lot of them here on YouTube and nothing has topped this. I have bought maybe six or seven of these at this point and I will continue to do so because I just cannot live without it. I think I actually discovered this towards the end of last year, but I feel like this is the year we became like married. We got married this year. This is a recent discovery for me. This is the Fenty Fly, Night, Fly Liner Liquid Liner, and this is quite a recent purchase. However, it has immediately become my favorite liquid liner, replacing my Kat Von D tattoo liner, which used to be my ultimate favorite. I've had some real issues shopping at Debenhams this year and Debenhams is the only stockist of Kat Von D beauty and therefore I can't really get it anymore. So I decided to give this one a try thinking maybe it will replace it for me. So I decided to give this one a go and I love it even more. It has a very long sort of tip brush tip to it. I am not someone who's ever found it easy to do winged liner at all. I have, you know, hooded eyes. I am, you know, in no way a professional, so I don't have as much practice as if I, you know, was doing wind liners every day of my life. So I've really had to like practice and this just makes it so easy. It's really easy to do a nice close line to your lash line so that you're not taking up too much lid space if you have hooded eyes and it makes the flick of a winged liner a piece of cake. I promise you, if you really struggle with winged liner, this is gonna give you the biggest handout ever. It is really, really good. So speaking of Kat Von D Beauty, this is her signature brow pencil and I have the shade Dark Brown. This has become my absolute ride or day. It's ride or die. Ride or day is not a thing. Ride or die brow product. If, if you're in a hurry, it is very quick and easy to use on your brows. Perfect for doing brow-like strokes. I love everything about it, apart from you get a very small amount in here, much less than, say, in the Benefit Goof Proof. It has this perfect flat shape that when you use it this way, I mean, look how fine that is. It is just perfect. I have not found anything as good to do like the hair like strokes at the front of the brow. I can't shop at Debenhams anymore. I make my mum order this for me because it's that much better than any other brow pencil I've ever tried. It's worth the extra stress. So primer for me this year, the Fenty Beauty Primer. I love this stuff. I don't know if you can see how much I've loved this stuff. It is essentially all gone. I am now like taking the lid off and scraping the inside of the jar. I find it really smoothing, but moisturizing. I find it does extend the wear of my foundation. I find it makes foundations look better, smoother, more flawless. And it just, you know, any kind of pores, lines, texture, wrinkles, definitely smoothed away, not away, you know, they're not gone. It's not a miracle cure but improved, let's say, you know, you know, disguised slightly. Um, yeah, I love it. I think it's pretty good value for money. You get a decent amount in here, a whole 32 mil, and it's frankly a joy to use on the face. 
I've discovered like all of my ultimate favorite foundations this year. Like the foundations I have in rotation, is that poem? Um, have completely changed this year because I found literally the top five I've ever used in my life, I think all this year. But there is one that has left the others standing in its wake and that is the Dior Backstage Foundation. This one is completely empty. I've asked for a new one on my Christmas wish list because I don't want to just repurchase another one when I do have lots of others that I love but this is just perfect for me at the moment. It is very flexible and buildable so you can do a completely sheer lightweight look or you can build up pretty much to full coverage. I'm wearing it today and it is like a fairly matte finish for me um, because you know I like more luminosity generally but it does have a very lifelike sort of luminous matte finish if you see what I mean it doesn't look flat matte at all it looks like skin it feels like nothing you get 50 whole mils in here which is a really good deal so although it is a higher end foundation you're getting almost twice as much as some other foundations so really the price point is very reasonable I like the packaging it's very travel friendly it is a very long wearing it doesn't transfer I just love everything about it there is really nothing I have bad to say about this at all concealer and powder for me this year has been a complete game changer I started off loving Max Patrick's powder and then Huda came out with her concealer and her baking powder and quite frankly my whole world was flip turned upside down Fresh Prince. This is by far the best concealer I've ever used. It is the fullest coverage with the smallest amount. It doesn't crease, it doesn't exaggerate lines and wrinkles. It brightens, it smooths, it feels lightweight as anything. The only reason I wouldn't recommend Huda products is if you are sensitive to fragrance because everything, as we know, is very fragranced. It doesn't bother me at all, but I know it does lots of people. But otherwise, for me, this knocks it out of the park. Same thing with her powder, this is very heavily fragrant, so if you don't like that, you won't like this. This has lasted me a very long time, I use it every single day of my life. It's very flattering on my under eye area, it's very brightening, it's totally smoothing, it keeps everything totally in place. I just have been obsessed with it. The difference between this and like my next favourite, which would be the Patrick's powder, which to be honest, when I tried that, I that was like holy grail for me, but this, it's ten times better. I'm obsessed with it, it's just amazing. Now this was something I discovered, I think again towards the end of last year, this is Charlotte Tilbury's contour wand. It has lasted me a whole year. Now bear in mind I don't cream contour every single day of my life, but that was the one thing I was kind of concerned with this because it is expensive and it looks really small, but you use such a small amount. Now if you are someone who doesn't want to look contour this is such a good product it's so natural while still really doing its job like it really does give you an extra chisel so I've used it really lightly today as well as my bronzer and I just find it so easy to work with melts into the skin looks like nothing but still is really effective and it has lasted me for a year, a whole year, using it at least once a week. Yeah, it's lasted me a really long time. You use a tiny amount and I love everything about it. It's the perfect shade, it's the perfect formula. It's just perfect, okay, it's good. I liked it. So there were two highlighters for me this year that I couldn't choose between. And again, the, the first is this palette from Dior. This is the Dior Backstage Palette. So this is what I reach for if I'm wanting to blind people. Here are all the shades swatched. I generally use these two in the middle, but obviously deeper skin tones, my God, this would be so gorgeous. Um, and again, really, this can be used on the eyes or again, with deeper skin tones, this would look gorgeous, that hint of pink shift in there. They are just all metallic, wet, melt into the skin. So pretty. And if, obviously if you are a makeup artist, this palette is essentially gonna give you something for every skin tone, which is really amazing. And again, I really like the packaging. It's really travel friendly. And if I want to beam like today, so today I have the gold shade on my cheekbones and I use the white shade down the bridge of my nose, which is generally how I use this. I'll use the gold shade all over the white shade, like inner corners, brow arch, and down the bridge of my nose where I want like more 
pop. I sometimes use the pink on my eyes and if I'm going to use the bronzy shade then I use it like as a topper but obviously this is too dark for me to use as a highlight but I'll sometimes use it as a bronzer topper if I want a really glowy bronzer in the summer. Just really pretty and perfect like I said for people who are using this on um, in their kit because you've got something for every skin tone. However if I am looking for something more casual, something more toned down, more natural, this is all I've been using and this is Natasha Denona's Super Glow in the shade 2 light medium and this literally looks like light. It literally is so natural. You can use it wet or just really heavy handed to make it more glowy, but it is just for me the perfect glow from within. Like, could it just be a trick of the light? This is the perfect shade for my skin tone. So it almost looks like it has no color. I mean, you can see on my hand, it just looks like light. It doesn't look like there's product there. It's very smoothing, doesn't add texture and just perfect for like a natural glow. I only have two bronzers which I think for me is an achievement because I am a, a real like bronzer fan. I love a good bronzer. The first up is the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow in the darker shade. She has two shades and this is the darker one which I picked up this year. This is the bronzer that I've got on right now and it is my all-time favourite bronzer. It's a little more cool, cool toned. I'm swatching the other shade in there. Obviously I can't use this as a highlight but I do sometimes use it as a blush and I also sometimes use it on my eyes but the main thing I love about this palette is this bronzer. It is just so luminous without being glittery or shimmery. It's the perfect like balance between sort of cool and warm. It is very gorgeously like it is gorgeous on the skin, it is very flattering, it is so easy to blend out and build up. I have been obsessed. I've barely used another bronzer since I picked this one up. But a pretty close second is the Too Faced Chocolate Gold Soleil Bronzer. Oh, this is delightful. It smells so much of chocolate, it is just like heaven. Very similar to the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer in that it sort of leans more neutral than it does warm. It is very, very glowy and shimmery. Once it's kind of buffed out on the cheek, it looks far more luminous than it does like glittery. It's very flattering. The smell, I mean, you actually can taste chocolate when you put this on. So it's almost like a snack at the same time. You can see how much use I've got out of this. This is like battered. Basically between this and the Charlotte Tilbury, I barely touch another bronzer these days. These two tick every one of my boxes. For blushes, I have three for you, which again, I think is quite restrained for me. First up, two of MAC's mineralized blushes that they brought out this year. These are the new sort of matte mineralized blushes, although I find them to be much more of a satin than a matte. And my two favorite shades in this formula are Sweet Enough, which is like a mauve shade and naturally flawless, which is a kind of neutral peachy shade. So this is sweet enough and this is naturally flawless. I love the formula of these blushes. They are so soft and smooth and like luminous on the skin. I absolutely love the formula. And these two shades are just everything I need. If I wanna go more peachy or more neutral or toned down or natural, I go naturally flawless. If I'm looking to be a bit more blushing like naturally sort of you know more of a mauvey smoky sexier kind of look then I'll really pack on sweet enough it is a lighter shade so it won't show on sort of deeper skin tones than mine but it is really buildable and foolproof if you have lighter skin my ultimate favorite blush not just of this year but ever of life is the Laura Mercier blush color infusion in the shade peach this has been everything this year. Again, I have it on my cheeks right now and it is just the most flattering. I don't know why I've swatched it there. It's just really not helpful. If you, ha if you like peach blushes, you literally cannot go wrong with this. It is the perfect peach shade, the softest formula, the most beautiful, luminous finish without glitter or 
shimmer it is so flattering it is so wearable and it's the kind of peach shade that you don't have to have peach eyes like peach eyes peach eyeshadow you can wear this with any shade eyeshadow it doesn't have to be reserved for peachy looks it really does just work with any other colors you want because it is just so flattering and just the perfect shade i'm obsessed with it so lip products again i've been very reserved one lip liner and that is max spice i know it's not again it's not a new one but it was new to me this year i've got it on today with one of my lipsticks and it is just the perfect universal liner shade any nude any mauve any pinky shade any beigey shade this is going to work with it so you're going to get so much bang for your buck I fell in love with Max Lip Tensity lipsticks this year. This is my favourite shade, and this is Max Doe. It is just the perfect formula for like everyday whack it on. You don't need a mirror. I have lots of shades of this, but this is my favourite. Very hydrating, very smooth very moisturizing on the lips perfect for winter lots of different choices they have really powerful gorgeous deep shades and they have really nice light everyday shades and everything in between but it is just a gorgeous wearable easy to wear easy to apply formula next up max powder kiss lipsticks i'm obsessed with these i have three and i've got loads on my christmas wish list this is the shade sweet no sugar which is the perfect peachy nude shade and it looks gorgeous with spice as well that's a real nice favorite combo of mine i love the formula of these lipsticks because they are very matte but they are not dehydrating or drying on the lips they feel like a sort of lip balm or like a moisturizer they go on very smoothly and they don't dry out the lips they actually feel like they hydrate the lips which is quite a unique thing to have achieved so that is why i'm obsessed I'm obsessed with this formula so much. And last but not least, not just my favorite for the year, but my favorite lip of all time, what I'm wearing right now, and this is Pat McGrath's Lust Angeles lipstick. Works perfectly with Max Spice, also looks gorgeous with Max Stone lip liner. It's the perfect everyday, every occasion lipstick, in my opinion. For me, it's not so light that it's like blending in with my face, but it's not so dark that it makes it too much, you know, for like more casual occasions or like school runs, work, office, that sort of stuff. You can easily wear this on a night out with a, a lip liner. You can gloss it up. It's very easy to apply. It's very smoothing. It sits so beautifully on the lips. It doesn't exaggerate lip lines. It makes your lips look perfect and plumper and it's just the most smooth again hydrating soft formula ever i am absolutely obsessed with it it's my favorite lipstick of all time um and yeah i'm in love with it last but not least the fenty gloss bomb i'm not really a gloss girl but if I am in a real hurry and I don't have time for lipstick or I just want to look like I've got nothing on, I want to be able to kiss my children and not leave lip marks all over their whole faces, this is what I wear. It's obviously not really going to show up because it's almost clear with just a, a hint of colour. It smells amazing. It is not sticky at all. It lasts really well for a lip gloss. It's very flattering, juicy looking. It makes your lips look plump and full and smooth. And it's just really easy to wear. Again, can be worn with any other makeup every single day of your life. When I nearly forgot the Barley Body Self Tanning Mousse, they actually sent this over to me for me to review. And let me tell you, I wasn't really expecting to like it in fact I was almost sure I wouldn't and then I was obsessed with it I've just been using this on my legs because my legs are so much paler than the rest of me because they just really never see the light of day to be honest and even if they do the sun just doesn't seem to tan my legs in the same way it does the rest of my body um, so this has just meant that if I you know go out and I've got a skirt on or you know I've been going out to events and I've just been whacking a bit of this on my legs and it's just perfect it's so easy to use it's so quick it doesn't get everywhere it just lasts the perfect amount of time and it doesn't fade patchy as well that's something that's caused me issues with tanners in the past is that as they fade you start to look ridiculous whereas this it literally fades 
evenly which is massive for me so I know that I'm not gonna be a patchy mess by day three so yeah this was a revolution for me so there you have it that is all of my favorites from 2018 I hope you guys had an amazing amazing year and that you are going to enjoy your Christmas I hope to see you in a future video otherwise take care for now bye 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 bye, bye.